you know, I see a college football coaching staff because of the limitations on the, the number allowed, much like, let's say, a Major League Baseball pitching staff, where there's a certain formula that's acceptable and the approach of almost everyone. And then there may be an outlier or two based on certain strengths and weaknesses where they carry instead of five starters, maybe six starters and then more uh, are less in the bullpen and so forth and so on. So I got to think that there's a very cut and dry formula to coaching staffs in college football in terms of where these resources are allocated, allocated and for everybody else in the nation, one of those slots is reserved for a special teams coordinator. Well, I mean, Lincoln Riley has been very clear, like give, give Lincoln Riley this much. Like he doesn't try and uh, hide it. Like he, he just says like special teams is just a small portion of practice time and practice sessions and drills. And, and, and why, why do I have to dedicate one of my precious 10 on field assistant spots to this? Now, one could make the argument that, you know, behind the scenes, USC should be in a position to, you know, petition the NCA or whatever the particular uh, authority is in terms of the governing body, in terms of regulating that rule. You know, let's get rid of that limitation. You know, why limit it to 10? Let's push it to 11 or 12. Then USC could just add a special teams coordinator on top of that. That's kind of a sidebar, but it's still worth noting for this conversation that, you know, there has been some discussion. There has been some push and pull. I don't know what like the political status of such a petition or movement actually is behind the scenes. I don't know what the status is, but like I know that's been talked about, you know, to get rid of that artificial rule uh, on your on, a number of on field assistants. Um, but that point aside, you know, Lincoln Riley currently believes that it, it's just not that important. Um, and, and I think a lot of Lincoln Riley's critics will come back to him and say, all right, you don't think a, a special teams coordinator is important. Why aren't, why aren't you at least getting the defensive side of the ball solved? You know, why, why is the gap between, and of course this was throughout his tenure at Oklahoma, like I'm fully aware of it. Why is the gap between Lincoln Riley's, uh, coaching on offense and defense, you know, so like the grand Canyon, uh, almost every season. You know, we, we see just how detail-oriented Lincoln Riley is on offense. And then you look at his defenses and, you know, all that attention to detail is missing uh, on that side of the ball. You know, it's just opposite sides of the coin. That, that it, does, it shouldn't have to be that way and that really shouldn't have to persist, but it does. And that really uh, annoys – I mean, it annoyed Oklahoma fans even when Lincoln Riley was winning Big 12 championships there because it would show up in the playoff semifinals uh, late in the season. And now, it, now you know, USC fans got that full Lincoln Riley taste. You know, all the brilliance on offense, but then those late season big game defensive implosions. And you just ask yourself, hey, I mean, Lincoln Riley's really, really good. There's no doubt about that. But, you know, this, there's this persistent flaw and it's a big one and it's out there and it gets exposed in a very public way every December and or early January. And you wonder when is when is Lincoln Riley going to just make that change internally uh, where he devotes the requisite amount of focus and attention to the defensive side of the ball to get this thing fixed. And that that's the question that's going to follow him into 2023. And we'll see if doubling down on the current strategy, the current methodology, the current coaching staff is going to work for him. It's going to be fascinating. The two teams that led the nation in field goal <coughs> attempts this year, number one and two in the nation, Michigan and Georgia. So it's not all bad uh, attempting field goals. You can be successful attempting field goals, apparently. I didn't expect to see that when I pulled it up. I just thought I would reference that first and foremost versus how many USC has. And I'll look that up in just a second. But I agree with Lincoln Riley in that special teams is not as important to football as it once was. And I've outlined the reasons that at least I've come to that conclusion. Number one, the kickoff has been taken out of play to a large extent. Um, I, I've All you have to do, folks, is go to college football statistics and look up the number of kickoff returns in the game today just look at the the number 
for all the teams in the nation, how many kickoff returns they returned this season. Go back 10 years and look at the numbers. You will you will see a stark contrast because uh, the powers that be want to take um, – you know, the injury factor out of it, want to make the, the sport safer. The kickoff return is a fairly dangerous play. And they're, they've been incentivized it by, number one, bringing the ball out to the 25-yard line, first and foremost. And then more recently, regardless of where you catch it, bringing the ball out to the 25-yard line. So not just the touchback, any ball that's caught within uh, the 25-yard line is brought out to the 25. So it's free yardage. Uh, secondly, these punters have become so good, uh, at number one, the style of punny with, a, with the rugby punting, you know, sprinting to the right, kicking it downfield where it's difficult to get your hands on it and return it. Number one, number two, uh, even the more traditional guys boom it higher and deeper than ever before. Therefore it's, it makes less sense to return it. Uh, point number three is uh, blocked field goals or blocked punts, I should say, are not nearly as much part of the game as they were at one point because the risk reward is simply not just a smart play to make. Even though they're fun plays to watch, the, the risk reward is just not there unless you can master it like Notre Dame did this year. Yeah, and I would I would also add that just, you know, analytics being what they are, you know, you are seeing coaches being much more aggressive on fourth down than they were in the 1980s. Absolutely. You know, they're like that is an obvious culture shift. You know, in, in in 40 years ago, early 1980s, you know, that was the era of Herschel Walker, Bo Jackson. It was still a running back driven sport. The 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 Woody Hayes, Bo Schembechler ideal of three yards in a cloud of dust, you know, defense running game be fundamentally sound in the kicking game you know that was still the prevailing uh methodology in college football and appropriately so like it, it was a very different game we didn't have mike leach yet we didn't have steve spurrier yet we didn't have those guys you know revolutionizing the passing game and so you know having great special teams really did matter like georgia under vince dooley like kevin butler uh rex, rex robinson you know, elite kickers, uh, elite kicking game, married with the defense, married with Herschel. Like, that's why Georgia uh, won three straight SEC titles, won a national title, uh, like had four straight years finishing in the top five, top six. Like, that Like that was how you won back then. And today it's a very different deal. So, like, so like I can understand that. But I would, I would say, and, you know, to kind of continue this conversation, and I might have hinted at this point, in past shows here at the voice of college football, but, but let me just state it more directly with the athletes that USC has, and more specifically with the offensive playmakers USC has a guy like Relique Brown, you know, other, you know, really speedy guys with great uh, natural talent. You think about Reggie Bush, you know, under Pete Carroll, um, you want to, you need to unlock those guys on kick returns, you know, whoever you choose to put back there when you have lightning in a bottle, and you have the chance on a punt return uh, or, or just a kick return in general to get a 90 yard uh, kick return, like, you know, an elite special teams coach, a guy who is really on top of the details, you know, just getting like one or two 90 yard kick returns for a touchdown over the course of a season, especially if that comes in a big game against Utah, Washington, Oregon, Notre Dame, like the, the value add of just one or two, really big plays in key moments. Like that's the point of emphasis in a big moment. When you can deliver a huge special teams play like that changes seasons. And I did mention in our last show last Thursday here at the voice of college football that, you know, if Notre Dame getting Sam Hartman at quarterback, well, that game in South Bend, that's going to be a bear. That is going to be a really tough game for USC. And so if there's a special teams mismatch against Brian Mason, the Notre Dame, uh, super duper special teams coach and the game's decided by seven points and it comes down to Notre Dame getting a, a 60 yard return here and a block punt over there. Like, like Lincoln Riley is he, like he is tempting fate. Now maybe the offense is going to be so good that it doesn't matter, but like, w what did we see this season? We saw that as great as the offense is, the margins are always so small because of the defense and that puts you in a situation where one special teams miscue, Mario Williams in the Cotton Bowl, you know, can tip the scales. 
And and so yeah, like so you're right, Mark. Special teams and 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 kicks in general and kickoffs in particular, not as prevalent as they once were. You know, it's 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 very downscaled. And yet, and yet, it was a kickoff miscue that really hurt USC in the Cotton Bowl. And so, even though it's a small a smaller percentage of plays, uh, it, you know that you need to have to get it right when it's there. You need to get it right in the big moments. And I just philosophically don't believe with the idea of winging it on anything. Like you shouldn't wing it on defense. That's why you make a run at Jim Leonard instead of retaining Alex Grinch. Uh, but again, you know, we've kind of litigated that point. Like Lincoln Riley wasn't bringing Alex Grinch to LA for one year. He it was always going to be at least two, you know, to give him some space and, and also stock the roster with more talent. But again, like the, the, there is a philosophy here. Like it's not just, you know, a knee jerk look at, you know, bad results. There's also the reality that USC is sitting on so much talent, so much potential. Why wouldn't you want to unlock that talent in each instance of a special team's return uh, of a kick? Yeah. So for example, here, uh, Ohio university led the nation in kickoff returns with 56 and go back 10 years, and there are 49 teams in college football that had at least 56 kickoff returns. So so it has changed quite a bit. Um, however, we are, back to your point, talking about kickoff returns, kickoff coverage, punt returns, punt coverage, field goals, field goal uh, PATs as well. You know, you're talking about so many different aspects that aren't similar skill sets. You've got all sorts of different, you've got long snappers, you've got holders, you've got both punters and place kickers, you've got coverage people, you've got return people. And so to just kind of spitball all of those different roles is just doesn't seem like the best move to me. Yeah. I mean, that, that that's where we are. 